Hi, I'm John with Orange Mod Works, and in this video, we are going to install the latest hammer shot kit into a hammer shot. Let's get started. This is a little more involved than, let's say, Retaliator Mod. We've got to punch a few pins, and we'll need a few extra tools. So, in order to install this kit, you will need a Phillips head screwdriver, a punch something to punch down into so you're not driving your pins into your table pliers it's recommended to use a hammer but sometimes you can just pop those pins out uh, just with your own force but hammer makes it a lot easier and of course a small flathead to work the shell apart if it's being stubborn and, stubborn and doesn't open up so i've already taken the screws out of this blaster and when you get a brand new hammer shot, be sure to take a hobby knife or a pocket knife and cut through this sticker because you're going to end up taking out all your screws and then wonder why you can't get the shell open. You have to cut that sticker. Or I guess peel it off, but it leaves behind a lot of glue. So I'm going to gently split it open. If it sticks, which it tends to stick down here, you can just grab the uh, flathead, stick it in and work the shell open. So I'm, I have all my screws just in this part of the shell, so I'm going to set it aside. Be careful not to lose your accessory tooth. It is spring-loaded and can shoot out if you're not careful. So now that we have the blaster open, the first thing we're going to do is just take out the entire cylinder and set that aside. Make sure this part doesn't come out with it. You will need this to uh, support the, uh, the kit cylinder. So I'm just going to set that aside and take a look at what we have. So these three screws are going to come out and if you can get the stock spring out first it just takes the tension off the entire system before you uh, take these screws out because these are holding everything in place. I'm going to set the stock spring over here so I don't get them mixed up and take out these screws. trigger when I take this out. I'm going to set these aside. Okay, so we have a small coil spring that holds the trigger in place. It's kind of a pain to put in the metal trigger if you remove that spring. So I'm going to replace the trigger first. I'm going to hold the coil spring with my finger and lift the trigger straight out. And there, now the spring is in the correct position, and this thin section up here will go through the small hole in your kit trigger. So I'm going to find that. And feed it through the hole. It's a little tricky. There we go. So now that the kit trigger is in place, it will hold that small spring in place while we're working on the rest of the blaster. So I'm going to pull out the hammer and plunger and spring guide. So the plunger rod and spring guide we're going to install into the metal hammer. Okay. So for that we're going to need our punch and our block. So these pins go in one way. One side of the pin has knurling on it and that grips the plastic. The other side of the pin is smooth. So you just pinch, and I can see that the plastic on this side is moving and the pin is staying stationary. So I know that the knurling is on this side. So I'm going to punch the smooth side out to get the knurling free. So I'm going to set that up, and I'm going to use the hammer. So I have a hole drilled in a wooden block that lets me drive the pin out. If I were to put it here and just start hammering on it, you know, you wouldn't get anywhere, and you do need something like this to support your plastic parts because you don't want to break the uh, plunger rod or spring guide. So I'm going to set that dead center and then not hit the camera. Okay. 
there. That one was pretty stubborn. There was no way I would get that out by hand. So there's the pin. And you can see the knurling on one side and how it's smooth on the other. Most of the time, you'll end up pounding it out a little bit, and then you just grab it with the pliers and pull it out. But this time, it just it was under a lot of pressure. So I'm going to set the plunger rod and this pin aside. Set that in. And we're going to get the spring guide off. The spring guide is much thicker. It's a little harder to squeeze to determine which side has knurling. OK. So I'm going to set that up like so, knurling side down, and carefully tap it out without hitting the camera. OK, that came out a lot easier. All right, so we no longer need this hammer. Set it aside. And we no longer need the spring block, or the punch block. So the spring guide goes there, and the plunger rod goes up here on the nose of the, uh, kind of looks like a rabbit. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to drop the pin knurling side up. take our pliers and if you have adjustable pliers I like to adjust them to the wider setting and just press the pin in until the knurled side is flush there we go Okay, so take your blaster, and when we install this, on the back side of the hammer, we have this structure that sticks out further than the rest. That is going to hook on to this right here. So if you install your hammer with that post back here, when you go to prime, your cylinder will not rotate. This section has to catch onto this bar, so when you pull it back, it rotates the cylinder. So you want to be careful, keep everything in place. There's a small spring behind here, so if this whole structure gets lifted out, um, you run the risk of losing those springs. All right, and this lowest hole is going to go over the hammer pin. We're going to hold our trigger in place. And sort of rotate that down and once our spring guide is over I haven't pressed this down yet I'm going to push it all the way forward and then press it down and now you can see the cylinder will rotate all right next we're going to put down this bracket that holds everything in place At this point, if you want to put the spring in before putting this bracket down, you can. And I think I'll do that now because it makes it a little easier. But you don't want to, before this is screwed down, lift this up. It'll pop everything out. So I'll let it come up a tiny bit, and I'll slide the spring over the spring guide carefully. Oh, and the spring is tapered. The fatter side goes down. your loop. Okay, lanyard loop. Okay. So now because this is the aftermarket spring, there's a little more pressure being pushed up. It's going to make it hard to line these screw holes up. 
but because we already have one screw in place, it's lined up. Put that down. at this point very carefully because you don't want the spring to shoot out. All right. Okay, looks good. Just double check everything. All right, next we're gonna replace the air seal. Now at this point, because this is screwed down, can lift this out. You don't have to do this to install the air seal, but for video purposes, it makes it a lot easier to see. So this is sort of the chassis that holds all your moving parts. And in the back, we have this little extension spring. Don't lose this. All right, so up at the front, oh wow, you can see from the factory, that's kind of off center and this foam is kind of weak. See, just by scr scratching it with my fingernail, it's starting to deter deteriorate. So over time, even with a stock cylinder, just over time, these seals get worn down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrape it off with my fingernail and just go all the way around. There, and the adhesive, um, doesn't really leave any residue behind. It's very easy to get off with your fingers. I'm gonna set that aside, grab a seal, pop the core out of the seal, and then peel the tape off the back of the seal. Now you'll notice that there's a flat section. That's the top. So that little flat section will sit on top of the air restrictor valve. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered, but you know, you want it as close as possible. Oh, and that's, the adhesive is very sticky. <laughs> so, careful. Okay, that'll work. As long as it isn't touching the AR valve, you'll be fine. So let's pop this back in and get the cylinder installed. Okay, so now take your cylinder and the little axle. Uh, nothing holds this in, it just rides in there. On the stock cylinder, this doesn't come out. On, a, on the kit cylinder, it, it's just held in. So what we're gonna do is install the cylinder down at this angle and then rock it into place. This ring here will sit behind this structure of the shell. So we're gonna rock that in and you have to push back and make sure it rotates easily. Then we'll take the front axle, pop that in, rotate it. It sits in the blaster with this edge going straight down. Just drop that in. And it should feel, um, it should feel loose because the other half of the shell isn't on. If you can't rotate it, easily, then just double check that nothing's binding back here. And yeah, you can see that the cylinder wants to rotate it, wants to rotate. So at this point, get the top half of your shell and pop it on. And there's our test prime. For some reason, when the shell is open and you prime it, the trigger won't lock. It needs the rigidity of the other half of the clamshell. So what I'm gonna do is you can, before you put all your screws in, you can hold it down, push down into your table, pull the trigger with your index finger. And to not dry fire, you can hold the hammer with your other index finger. So I'm gonna pull back. There it locks. That's good. I'm gonna hold this and give it a test. 
and the hammer falls. Let it fall gently. You don't want to just fire it because your screws will go flying. So at this point, screw it down and we'll test fire. Thanks for watching.